Jinkies. Jeepers. Zoinks! <laughs> Come on, gang. Let's split up and look for more clues. Quick, do something, Scoob. <laughs> In many cases, there are much younger children who don't understand that there are real people behind the character voices. And so usually they're kind of excited to, to learn that that's how the magic comes about. Don Messick did the voice of Scooby-Doo originated, and Don was just brilliant at breathing life to that character. With Don Messick, he would simplify it with, well, it's a dog and uh, there are different types of dogs, and he was given an idea of what the dog's personality was like. Well, I think Don got into the psyche of an animal that <laughs> was very much like Scooby-Doo. That dog was alive, <laughs> and it was, was a being, a human being. <laughs> and here's a bold old dog. He just invested that character with so much personality and made him so funny that it's impossible not to love him. Do I get a Scooby star? We'll look for one after we're off the camera here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just got the idea for a trap that'll solve this mystery. Listen. I would have to describe Fred as being uh, the guy in the group who has a license, and that's why the other kids have him around, so he can drive the mystery machine. Hang on, gang. <laughs> Fred really is uh, kind of the all-American guy. He's, uh, he's got a good heart. The way that I got the part for Freddy, I was doing a stand-up routine, and within this routine, I did like a dog and cat fight, a lot of, you know, <laughs> and this executive said, you know, we're doing a show called Scooby-Doo, and there's a dog, why don't you come in and audition for Scooby-Doo, and I said, Great. So I went over there and I got the script and I saw Shaggy. This is me. Funny character. You know, and I'm always playing the straight guys. And so I sit down and meet Casey and he's just fantastic. I said, well, what part are you reading for? And he says, oh, I'm reading for Shaggy and I want to read for Freddy. The character I wanted to do was Fred. And so they said, no, we, we'd like you to read the, the other character, Shaggy. I said, oh, okay, well, uh, what is it you want? And uh, he said, come up with something, and uh, what I came up with was, Scoobo, buddy, old friend, old pal, it's me, <laughs> your friend Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool, Unc. They called me back three times, and the third time, apparently, they, they, uh, they saw what they liked, and so they, they hired me. Well, gang, I guess that wraps up another mystery. They showed me a picture of Velma, and I realized that she looked a lot like me, except she didn't dye her hair. But basically, I looked a lot like the picture. My glasses! I can't see without my glasses. It was not my real voice, but it wasn't that far away. Velma lisps, I lisp. Velma has kind of a slightly kooky voice. I guess my voice is slightly kooky. I think my character set a good example for girls. They didn't have to follow around. They could lead. They could have the ideas. That's what I always liked about my character. That's your cue, Daff. Right. Oh, no. My finger's stuck in the keys. I can't work the trick. Danger-prone Daphne did it again. Danger-prone Daphne. Yeah. She would fall down chutes and get the rest of the kids in trouble. Wait! Help me! The girl that had played Daphne for a short period of time had left and gone to New York to get married. Nicole, Jaffe, David was my roommate and said, get in here. They're looking for Daphne. You can do Daphne. Jeepers! I'm doing Velma. We could, we could do this together. This would be great fun. She was very right for the character. So when the other girl left, I, I called Heather and I said, come down right away and audition for this because I think you'd be terrific. I didn't always listen to her. But for this, I did. Good show, Scooby. You were so brave. We ought to be in the movies. Scooby-Dooby-Doo.